Okay, now we're gonna do some of the, this is a fundamental experiment that we do in physics with all the equations and stuff, but today I'm just gonna illustrate some basic stuff to you. I'm gonna uh, run different kinds of objects down the table, and I'm gonna see which ones win, who wins the race, and we're gonna compare them. This, is, this concept is based on um, the idea of uh, moment of inertia, and for more detailed information on this, go and check my notes on moment of inertia of cylinders, spheres, and all of that. In the class, we proved that the moment of inertia of a cylinder, solid cylinder, is half m r squared. For basic uh, concept of moment of inertia, think of it as how hard it is to make something rotate. Think of it like mass, but the equivalent of mass for rotation. So. If the moment of inertia of something is big, it's hard to make it rotate. So, moment of inertia of a solid cylinder is half mr squared. What really matters here is the coefficient in front of the mr squared. For a solid cylinder, the coefficient is a half. For a hollow cylinder, or almost hollow, Okay, uh, it would be mr squared. So notice the coefficient is a uh, one. So it's harder to make a hollow cylinder rotate than a solid cylinder because all its mass is distributed on the outside. So now it's harder to make that thing rotate. How about if it was a cylinder halfway between, kind of like like this? Well, then we would expect the moment of inertia of this to be in between the two. Not as hard as not as hard to rotate as the hollow one, but easier to rotate than the solid one. So uh, it turns out that the equation of this is half m r one squared plus r two squared, and it comes between the two. So if we race them, this one should uh, this one should win wins in a race, this one loses, and then this one comes in the middle, okay? Okay, how about uh, spheres? If you have a solid sphere, then its moment of inertia is two, uh, two fifths mr squared. So again, Notice what matters is the coefficient, which is a 0.4. It's a coefficient of 0.4. So a sphere is 0.4, which is less than the 0.5. So a sphere is easier to rotate than a cylinder. Why is that? Well, because the sphere is more compact. Think of it that way, it's more compact. Its distribution of mass around an axis is closer than a cylinder is, okay? Uh, so think of it this way, if you had a car with spherical tires and you let them run the, uh, down the hill, they would go faster than cars with cylindrical tires. But of course, spherical tires are not made right now. <laughs> okay, uh, how about hollow sphere? Moment of inertia is two thirds mr squared. This coefficient is 0.667, something like that, right? That one is between uh, between 0.5 and 1, right? So it's gonna go slower than a solid cylinder, but faster than a hollow cylinder. Okay, that's the hollow sphere. So let's try some of these things. Okay, so now I'm going to take two spherical, they're solid spherical balls, but they have different mass and different radius. This is heavier and bigger, this is smaller and lighter. I'm going to show that they take the, about the same time to complete the race, because I want to show it to you that mass and radius doesn't uh, make a difference. It's only the shape that matters. So I'm going to put these uh, rulers here as, guide, uh, as guides so that they go in a straight line, and start them about the same time and the same place. 
Ready, set, go. Okay, we try that again. Okay, so the bigger one is taking a little bit shorter time. The, the differences could be frictional effects that uh, friction is affecting the smaller one a little more than the, than the bigger one. So if they do take different time, then those are frictional effects caused by the friction of the table or the friction of the guiding ruler and that kind of stuff. Now let's compare the solid, uh, the solid sphere with the solid cylinder. The solid cylinder, I don't need uh, a meter stick. Okay. So I'm going to put the solid cylinder here. And which one should win? Well, according to our uh, lab, the solid sphere is 0.4. The solid cylinder is 0.5. The sphere should win. So start it out here. Ready, go. OK, the sphere won. Of course. The other reason that the sphere wins is because there's less frictional effects on the sphere than the cylinder. So that also helps, but do you see the point there? Now I can have uh, uh, the cylinder go against uh, the more or less hollow cylinder. So this one is a hollow cylinder, and this is a solid cylinder. And which one should win according to the theory? Well, according to the theory, the solid cylinder should win. Oh, I hadn't started the cylinder before. Okay. It seemed like the, the cylinder wants to go quicker, the solid cylinder, but then frictional effects slow it down, and then the hollow wins. But you can see at the beginning, solid cylinder starts to go faster. Okay, now let's compare. This one is a hollow sphere. This is a more or less a hollow sphere here. Compare that to a solid sphere. So the blue one is a hollow sphere, and the solid, solid sphere, the solid sphere should win the hollow sphere. That one was clear advantage to the solid. Very clear advantage. Try that again. Went off to the side here. Yeah. So you can see the hollow spheres winning. How about the hollow sphere with the, the hollow sphere with the cylinder? The hollow cylinder. Here, which one should win? The hollow sphere should win, right? Oh, definitely. Definitely that one, the hollow sphere won. So hollow of the both, the sphere is more compact and still wins. The other way we can illustrate these concepts is I'm going to get this uh, trough here. Could illustrate the same concepts by racing them this way. So, for example, you could race the you could race a solid cylinder with a hollow cylinder. Okay, the solid wins. Solid should go back and forth quicker. You could race. It's going to be a little bit tougher with the balls because. Uh, they need something to guide them, but let's try here. If we do the hollow sphere, hollow spherical ball with the solid spherical ball, yeah, solid sphere wins. You could definitely tell. So if they go back and forth quicker, that's another way of saying that they go roll quicker. So this is a very important principle in physics, and we have illustrated it to you a couple of different ways. Thank you.